Hey, what's going on? This is Matt Bowman, and this is Matt Bowman is Bothered, and I am in a new apartment. I'm in a new apartment, and this is actually the first time that I've recorded in several weeks. I've been such a piece of malarkey garbage with recording and being consistent, but I'm back at it, baby. Back frickin' at it, and I am going to be more consistent, but it's been because my life has been in upheaval. Um, uh, we moved uh, a couple weeks ago and then immediately went on vacation to, um, a whale's vagina, um, another way of saying San Diego. And we were out there and then we finally, this is like the first full week back that we've been in the apartment without any impending doom, not doom, but impending plans that would take us away from, from this apartment. But, uh, Something they don't tell you about moving is that you just have all the cardboard. Like, every size, shape, race of cardboard in existence, we have had it in our apartment recently. Like, because there's all of the boxes to move with all of your, your shit in it, right? But then you, because it's a new place and it's a bigger place, we, like, have to buy a bunch of stuff and all that shiz comes in in that special brown goodness that is cardboard and it is just there's a pile of cardboard next to the door at all times like there's one there i'm looking at one right now like how much cardboard can there possibly be and it like the super of our building has got to just be like are the, these people love and hate the environment like we're creating and using so much cardboard but at least we're recycling it uh so there's cardboard everywhere and that's fine. Um, but we've finally gotten settled. Um, and I'm now sitting on the couch in the living room. I don't know if this is going to be where I do this 100% of the time. But uh, yeah, I'm just trying to figure it out. Which is kind of the thesis of my life right now, I think. Is just trying to figure it out and make make it happen. Make it work. Um. But yeah, dude, we went to uh, we went to San Diego last week, which was super dope. Got to see the fam hang out there. Um, dude, it's so dope to go on a vacation um, where your family pays for it. I mean, come on now, dude. I mean, I'll go anywhere if I'm not the one paying for it. You know, they'd be like, hey, we are got an all expenses paid family vacation. Where are we going? Kiev, I'm in, dude. Like, put me there. Give me a rifle, and I'll hang out for two to three weeks. Like, as long as I don't have to foot the bill, I don't give a shit. You know, and like I've said before, I think if the United, if I told, if I called the White House and be like, "Hey, can you pay for me to go to Ukraine?" They'd be like, "Absolutely." No one is keeping track of how much money we're spending. Regardless, what's an additional? I don't know, five grand. How long does it? What does it cost to get to fucking Ukraine? Can you also fly to Ukraine still? I don't know. But uh, but yeah, uh, we went to San Diego. It was a really fun time. and uh, But getting there was a bitch and a half. We So we left at, I don't know, like 3 p.m. And I get into the car and I'm immediately car sick. And of course, this guy is driving an Uber, but he doesn't have air conditioning. And he's like, he's doing a good job. Like he's fucking Gran Turismo in it all around and gets it like is getting us there but he is stop start fucking up down like he's entering a cheat code and he's all over the place so i am just dying in the back just car sick out of my butt and i didn't shit in his car but that was just kind of how i felt um i could have shit out of my mouth that's how car sick i was but well, it's neither here nor there and so we get to the airport, everything's, it's fine, it's a cross-country flight, Sam and I both have middle seats, which, fucking awesome, on a cross-country flight, and uh, as we're, we're flying there, and something funny that happened on the plane was that we were, like, flying, and obviously, we were on the plane and we were flying. We were on the plane and we just like drove it to San Diego. It took way too long, but it was luxurious the entire time. Um, but no, we got middle seats in like uh, seat row 29,000 or whatever. And I sit down and I'm trying to figure out what to watch. And I just ha I decide on watching like straight out of Compton. 
um, which is a good movie. I had only seen it once like six years ago or whenever it came out. So I was like, oh, this will be a fun refresher. Let's check it out. And so I, I put that on and then like the d coolest black guy sits down next to me and like I swear like there's a scene like Ice Cube is like on screen or whatever and he like kind of like looks over at me and he just goes like like he gave me like the confirmation and I was like this is the best feeling in existence. Um, and so then he at one point we were flying over a fucking uh, storm and like we were above the lightning which seems insane that you can be above the lightning. Like, obviously, I know it's not fucking coming from space, but the fact that you can just get on top of where it's coming from, does that make sense? I sound like an idiot. Like, I don't understand how anything works, but it is funny to me that you can do that and just be above the lightning. And so we were above it, and it was, like, shining. Like, shining. It was, like, striking down. Ba, 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 Thor, you know? And... At one point, the same black guy, like, taps me on the shoulder, and he was like, hey, check this shit out. And, like, I look, and we see the thing, like, the lightning, it's going crazy. And he was like, this is the dopest shit I've ever seen in my life. And I'm like, yeah, it is, dude. And then we made out afterwards. Like, he's my new best friend. And that's that was a really fun time. So the flight itself was not bad. Um, but then we get to... It's like a six hour flight. It, we're, we're all fucked up. We land at like 1030 local time, which means it's like 130 to our bodies and we land. And of course, my parents, they had flown in earlier that day. And I guess somehow like United or Delta or whatever airline, like their bag hadn't gotten on the same plane as them. And so they had to, like, they they didn't want to wait at the airport, so they just left and left their bag there. And so my mom texts me and is just like, hey, can you go to pick up our bag? And I was like, I think this is a direct violation of every single fucking announcement at the airport. They're just like, please do not transport suspicious items from people that are not you. And my mom is just like, hey, how about, you know what I mean? It was, I was like, it feels a little terroristic, but... So we go and we pick that up. So it's a fucking huge ass bag and we've got a big bag ourselves and we go to call an Uber and we call the Uber and it's like seven minutes away, which I'm already in a bad mood. And I was like, just be closer, just irrationally upset that he's not like that. I'm not an Uber driver in that moment, honestly. And so he gets there and he pulls up in like this piece of shit fucking Honda hatchback I don't understand, like, bumper sticker, like, whatever it is, dude. It's making me mad already. And so, like, he opens it up, and he's got, like, the world's tiniest, shittiest trunk because it's a bad car. And he, we open it up, and we have to, like, we have these two huge bags, and so we put the bag in, and we're like, okay, we can fit this one here. Oh, don't worry. We can just sit the other one on the back seat. And then he looks at us, and he's just like, no. No, 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 no. I don't want any of that on the back seat. I don't want I, their leather seats. They're going to mess them up. Hey, man, maybe you shouldn't be fucking picking people up from the airport. Like, you, how, people have bags, you fucking buffoon. You absolute dunce. And then he, like, and especially, it, it's not like it, it's a fucking BMW or a Porsche or, like, it's nothing. It's not a good car. It is objectively a shitty car. And he's just like, nah, you can't put that shit in the back. I mean, I do coke back there, but you can't put your bag. I don't want your bag back there. And so uh, I'm like, okay, we, I, we just have this moment. And, like, I was so pissed. I was like, are you fucking serious like i said that to him i probably shouldn't but i was like dude are you fucking serious right now and he was like yeah dude can't do it what is it with fucking like i cars are fine but dudes that pretend that their car is like an extension of themselves i'm like dude i hope you get in an accident i hope i don't want you to die or get hurt but i want that car that means so much to you for some reason to be destroyed I want that taken from you. Uh, and so I was like, are you fucking serious, dude? Like, are we, is this, ha you're not going to do this. He's essentially, he's saying no to money because of his unrealistic standards of what his backseat should be accustomed to. Uh, and so we had to cancel that Uber, right? And 
we have to get another one, which is another fucking eight minutes. And so then we get then it's a half hour drive from the airport to our Airbnb where my parents are. And the whole reason like we had to get an Uber in the first place is because my mom was just like, oh, it's going to be too late. We can, you can just get an Uber from the airport. And I was like, OK. And then we get there and my mom is just up watching television. So she could have come and gotten us and I wouldn't have had to deal with Bryce, the fucking douchebag. Man, dude, I was mad. That's the end of that story is that I was just mad. But I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that makes me mad, dude. There's a lot of stuff that makes everybody mad. One of the things that's making everybody mad right now is fucking, what's her name? The lady from what, Rachel Ziegler or some some dumb, stupid name. Um, she's the lady that's playing Snow White, but absolutely despises it, which is, I, to their credit and her credit, I've never seen a movie marketed as such. Normally movies are just like, hey, this is going to be super dope and we love it and it's going to be amazing. I can't wait for this movie to come out. You guys should go see it. It's going to be the best. And bravely. Rachel Ziegler has gone in another direction where she is just like, I actually don't believe in anything that is uh, the, that this movie stands for. Um, I actually hate it. Um, when I think of it, I vomit. And I'm going to be condescending the entire time. And that's a refreshing approach to mov movie advertising. The fact that someone who is in the movie is basically like, this is bad. That's a funny way to, uh, you know what I mean? I actually, I also like it because she is objectively being like that. Uh, her like little mm, weird, weird. Like it's it's so insane that I'm like, oh, if but at least you're honest, you know. Like this is the kind of shit that we think that they're thinking all the time, and it is refreshing in a sense to just see somebody come out and actually say it of just like so clearly thinking that she's better than everybody which it's just like i'm sorry who are you who are you you're fucking nobody like it, it's the epitome of who and what people dislike about like hollywood is just like fucking actors that think they are the absolute tits and are God's gift to everybody. And they're not. They're not. Like, I don't know, dude. Actors annoy me in general, but the way that she just carried on and just, I was like, I, you actually have to admire this. You have to admire somebody's ability to so not read the room and so, and be so disconnected with what people actually want and like it's it's hilarious to watch it unfold and have them be not only oblivious to it but like double down on their own behavior and then they get upset when people are like this movie sucks and then they're like well actually it 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 might suck but it's your fault i don't think that that works any way else like, if I order something at a restaurant and it tastes like shit and I'm like, can I speak to the chef? And the chef comes out and I'm like, hey, man, this has shit in it. And he's just like, um, actually, that you're racist. Like, that, that's essentially their re Hollywood's reaction to when movies don't do well. It's an incredible trick. Like, just try flipping that around where they make... That you would never be able to get away with that. Where at work or anywhere, like you shit the bed on a project and your boss comes to you or your coworkers come to you and they're like, hey, you kind of fucked up on this project. It's the, it's not very good. Like you, you, you didn't put in the effort. Like you weren't taking it seriously. And then you get to be on the side of righteousness and be like actually you i you don't even work here anymore hi ted buddy you gotta get down i'm recording a podcast get the fuck down again i swear to christ i don't know how it fucking happens i don't see teddy my fat lard of a cat i don't see him for 
days. And then as soon as I turn a fucking camera on, he's just like, oh, I would like to be participate. Here I am again on my own. That's Ted for you, dude. Ted, Ted, Ted. Um, but I have a stronger tripod now, so I should be able to uh, to repel his his attacks. But yeah, Rachel Ziegler, I don't... It's also hilarious how it's so universal, the response, and she continues to double down. Like, it is everybody. I haven't seen one piece, one person, one entity actually respond positively towards the movie or anything that she is saying about it and i i it's it's impressive because i did not know who this person was about two and a half weeks ago and for the rest of my days i will be actively rooting against her and that's fun it's fun to have enemies it's fun to have people to root against isn't it like where if you have a bad day and then you're fucking annoyed with your life, and then you're like, oh, man, remember that fucking prissy bitch actor? Let's check out, let's go watch that and watch people shit all over. That just, mmm, mmm, makes me feel good inside. I like that. I like it. Saw Oppenheimer. Let's talk about that. Oppenheimer was actually a good movie that was actually advertised as such. People still found a way to be upset with it, um, I love m my favorite critiques of movies are ones that I'm certain didn't even, I don't know, like didn't see the film or didn't understand what a movie was about. Like one of the big critiques, critiques, one of the big criticisms from people in about the movie was that it didn't show any like Japanese people in it. And I'm like, yeah, cause that's not what the fucking movie is about. It's not about, it's about making it. Also, would you would rather see just emaciated fucking human, Japanese, what are you talking about? It's like, well, we didn't focus enough on blah, blah, because that's not the story that they're fucking telling. You know, like that's, that's not what they're going for. Can you just sit back and fucking enjoy an amazing piece of cinema? Like, that's what that was. Like, it was... That's going to be, like, one of the best movies of the decade, I think. And it honestly makes me a little angry. I haven't seen Barbie, and I have nothing against Barbie. That's fine. I'm sure it's a great film. I have heard really good things about it. But, like, I don't know how, at the same time, like, these movies are being treated as equals. Like, one, they're two completely different types of movies. But, two, like, one is so clearly, like, this is a piece of art, and then this one is good, but, like, it's not this. Does that make sense? Where, like, I don't know, like, you see, you go to, like, a coffee shop, and there, somebody's art is on the wall, and it's really good. But then, no one is like, we should take that art and that make it, it's exactly like the Mona Lisa, actually. This art that costs $700 for some fucking reason is the exact same as one of the greatest things ever produced. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get how they became compared and they were like, these are going to be the blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It was a, it, I'm sure it was a fine movie, but there's no way, like, my brother and I were talking about it and Barbie is probably going to win a bunch of stuff, rightly so, great for that, love that, but, like, nobody's going to be talking about it in, like, 10 years. Whereas, like, Oppenheimer, like, that could be one of the best movies of all time, in my opinion. And, yeah, that's it, it, it's like if you go back and you look at, like, Enemy Awards in the 90s that, like, Seinfeld only won best comedy series one time and fucking Frasier won it, like, four or five times. It's like, that's bananas. You know what I've never heard in the history of my life? Anyone be like, dude... Did you see that episode of Frasier? Holy shit. No one ever blew their dick off because Frasier got on Netflix. Like, there's not a bidding war for Frasier. It's insane. And so it's going to be like that, where, like, at the time, I'm sure Frasier was a good show. I'm sure people loved it, and it was, a, it was amazingly entertaining and blah, blah, blah. But no one gives a shit now. 
And I think that's going to be kind of like what it is between Barbie and Oppenheimer, where like right now it feels pretty good for Oppenheimer, or excuse me, for, for Barbie. But I think Oppenheimer in general is going to be like more whatever. Oh, that's the other thing about, I saw like some, I saw some video, which when I say I saw a video, it just means I saw a TikTok, but I'm 30 and I'm embarrassed. Does that make sense? Does anybody else do that where you're like, I am too old to be on this app, so I'm going to make it seem like I watched a TED talk rather than a 22-year-old talk POV to a camera and explain something to me? You know, it's just my way of defending myself, I guess. Uh, but I saw a video where it was basically saying that potentially Oppenheimer could not could be disqualified for, from could be disqualified from winning awards because it doesn't match like the new like inclusivity standards or whatever, which is objectively hilarious. Like, I think that's going to put that shit to the test because obviously it's, it's a true story and the true story happens to be about 99% white people. I'm, I, but then people are just, but it's not, the it can't be a, a close, it, do you want the truth, and do you want good movies, or do you want fucking checkbox bullshit that's gonna water everything down? Like, that's, that's the problem, is that if you, you can write and create movies, songs, art in general, that are incredibly inclusive while also being authentic. And the inauth inauthenticity, I don't think, un inauthentic, unauthentic, whatever it is, dude. Like, it just feels, like, whenever you watch something and you're just like, this is the craziest assortment of people I've ever seen in my life and would never fucking happen. No one has this friend group. Every show is just like, this is my friend Marissa, she's a black trans dwarf, and over here is Tyler, he's Asian, um, and then we have Samantha, and she has Down Syndrome, and then we've got this, and I'm like, who, no, like, and then, do they take any of these characters any deeper, do they actually give them backstory, no, everything that these characters do it just revolves around the one thing that's on a list that they have to do and then they do, do you know what i mean and then they like talk about it a little bit but they don't like delve into it's the only aspect of their personality that they actually portray and it's so clearly not a person and it's just a checkbox this is how we gotta include these guys to do you know and I think people smell it, and I think that's why most of the movies that have been coming out recently have sucked ass. Most of the television shows, dude, most of the shit on Netflix, dude, like Netflix original stuff, give me a fucking break, dog. I don't know, man. I think I'm just angry today. I'm not, I don't know if I'm being necessarily funny, but I am definitely angry. Um, and it's definitely coming from the fact that Manchester United, um, has really, really shit the bed so far this season. Uh, we looked pretty good in the preseason. I'm recording this on a Saturday and we just lost, I hope just two nil to Spurs. I, I turned it off after an own goal made it two nil. Um, but we just haven't looked at it. We just have not looked at the races and I don't know what it is. Like we look off the pace, um, Nobody has really take. We scored one goal in two matches. That's not good. It's no bueno. And yeah, I think that we that put me in a bad mood. And then I played some FIFA and didn't do great at that. So I just my confidence is at an all time low. Good band name. Uh, but yeah, Manchester United have really not taken off super well. They really haven't done much so far this season and uh, this is i'm not at full panic red flag stage yet because obviously we started last season just about as atrociously as possible we lost our first two games we've won one of our first two we should have at least drawn the fir the the first one if not lost it uh yeah in the first half against spurs we looked good 
uh, Bruno missed a fucking header that my cat could have made. Like, holy Christ on a cracker, dude. Like, that was wide open. Uh, and then we concede, like, three minutes into the second half. But then we come right back, like, 45 seconds later, and Anthony cuts in and, like, puts it right off the post. I'm like, God damn it, dude. We've got to get Hoyland in. Like, we've got to get Rasmus Hoyland in to the squad as soon as possible because we've had to play Marcus through the middle, and he's just not nearly as good as he is out on the left. Like, he has to go out there and be able to get in behind. And I don't know, man. I had so much, and I still do, I had so much hope at the beginning. Like, this offseason, like, we've, we've made great transfers, bringing people in. Um, need to do a little bit better on going out, but we've done good business from what I could see and haven't really seen much from Mason Mount through two games, which is, again, I'm not terribly concerned, but it is concerning that he hasn't really been a part of anything. And then Onana has looked good. I like him. I like his, he's very dominating. He's got like a, he's got a presence. He's got an aura about him, very commanding presence at the back. Uh, and so I like that, and he can actually pass, and he showed flashes of that today. Um, but we just don't have, like, a cutting edge in the final third. Like, if Marcus isn't going to score, I don't know, as of right now, where the goals are coming from, which is why we need to get Hoyland in ASASASAP. K-I-S-S-I-S-S-A-S-A-P. And we need to get him in there so that he can start putting the ball in the back of the net because that's what we actually need. And because in the second half, we just, we, we had good chances. Like we had probably, of the goals that didn't go in, we had like two of the four best chances in the game. And we could have easily been up 2-1. Two, two we could have been tied 2-2, two, two, any of that. But we just weren't able to actually convert those chances in the final third. I think we need to be like... 10 to 15 percent better and some people might disagree some people think that we're way off and i do think we are off but i think we just need a little bit an eensy teensy spider more quality it's kind of what i feel we just need a little bit more quality um but yeah they put me in a bad mood because yeah we the second goal was an own goal and i just i can't i i was i thought for a second that I had made progress because we were watch I was watching the game by myself Sam's not here thankfully and I was I was watching and United we go down one nil all right and then we go down two nil and then I'm like okay just turn it off and I was like wow I feel great like normally I would like the cops would be called I would have like buried a body in the backyard i would have lost my shit i would have blown a blood vessel had an aneurysm like it would have been it was normally really bad but i i was pretty calm i stayed in the pocket i was like all right turn that off let's play fifa and that was a mistake i decided to play fifa when i was super upset and so i thought i had dealt with it i thought i had dealt with manchester united losing and then I turn on the game and I make like two wrong passes and I punched a hole in the wall. And I was like, oh. If you don't actually resolve the emotion, it just kind of beep boop, it just kind of sits there. And then it, it's kind of like under a carpet and it's a hole that's under a carpet and you're like, okay, I'm doing good. And then you step into the hole and you're like, God fucking shit, fuck, God fuck. You know, like, when you're just so mad. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I just get so mad that I just keep... I just string together just, like, every swear word in, like, an incoherent sentence that doesn't make any sense and mean anything at all. Like, I I gave up a goal, and I was just like... And I'm like, that doesn't... What? Maybe I should bleep some of this out, because this that's a lot. Because it doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? It's not great and probably not healthy for me to push all of that down, but it's also not healthy to let it come out. I don't know. This has been an interesting episode. Um, I don't know if it's been good, but it has happened. You know, I think I just need to get back into the swing of things and get ready and keep doing more shit, you know.
I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this has been something. And yeah, I got shows coming up this month uh, at The Pair and at Brooklyn Comedy Club. Got some other things. Uh, please rate, review, subscribe. I'm going to be posting a lot more uh, on YouTube, Instagram, X, and uh, TikTok. It'll be a good time. So uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Stay bothered, and I will uh, see you next week. Bye-bye.